For the past two years, I've been building my dream smart home using Home Assistant, an open source home automation platform. In that time, I've created over 150 different automations to simplify, or is it complicate, living in our home. Some of these automations trigger every few minutes, and others every few months, but each saves me time or energy or helps me do things that I would normally forget to do. A good home automation is one that makes things happen automatically without you having to press a button, speak to a voice assistant, or pull out your mobile phone to open an app. You barely notice it because it feels so seamless, but you definitely notice it when it's gone. I've spent a lot of time creating, tweaking, and improving my home automations. Even my partner regularly provides feedback on how we can make the existing automations better and gives me new ideas for new things we can automate. She loves our smart home, and in this video, I want to show you five of our favorite automations that we use every single day. Let's take a look. The first automation reminds me if the washing machine or clothes dryer needs to be emptied. You see, our laundry is all the way down in our basement, in its own little room. There have been many times when we've put on a load of laundry and then gone up to work in our home offices totally forgetting about it. We sometimes found ourselves going back to the laundry a couple of days later only to find a load of damp, stinky clothes in the washing and we had to put it back on for another wash. A total waste of time and energy. Now, we don't have a smart washing machine or dryer, so I needed to get creative if I wanted to get my smart home to remind us that there was a load of laundry waiting to be emptied. The solution I came up with was to use a smart plug with energy monitoring to figure out if the washing machine was off, running, or has finished running and is waiting to be emptied. I use Home Assistant automations that set the value of an input select helper based on how much power the washing machine was using. For example, if it goes from using 0 watts of power to using more than 5 watts of power, and the washing machine was previously in the off state, it sets the input select helper to a running state and sends us a push notification that the washing machine has started. Then another automation sets this input select helper to unemptied if the power usage goes below 3 watts for over 15 minutes, and it sends us another notification to let us know that the washing machine is finished. Sadly, we found that we were just swiping away this push notification and still forgetting to empty the washing machine. I needed a more persistent way to remind us that the washing machine was sitting there full of clothes, and so I ended up setting some of the smart lights in parts of the house that we always walk through, like the kitchen, to green whenever the washing machine was in its unemptied state. This meant that we were constantly reminded about these wet clothes until we did something about it. When we eventually went back to the laundry and emptied the washing machine, we could press this handy magnetic IKEA Zigbee button on the washing machine, and that would trigger the automation to set the input select helper back to off, so that the lights went back to their normal color. If you want more detail about these automations and how I made them, I've linked to an article I wrote on my Home Automation Guy website in the description below. In fact, I've made a more detailed video about every single one of the automations that you'll see in this video, and they're all linked below. And whilst you're down there, please subscribe to the channel if you're a fan of home automation and smart homes. This really helps me out and I'd really appreciate it. My second favorite automations are the motion and presence sensing smart lights that are all over our house. I don't think I've had to use a light switch in our house for over a year and a half now. Every single light automatically turns on and off when it's supposed to at an appropriate level of brightness for the time of day or whatever we're doing at the time. I use a combination of PIR, millimeter wave, and Bluetooth presence sensors to detect if a room has got people in it or not. If someone walks into a room, it will activate a given lighting scene based on the time of day. If it's daytime, the automation will activate a brighter lighting scene than at night when it activates a dimmer scene. Scenes in Home Assistant let you take a snapshot of the settings of a bunch of smart devices, recording all of their attributes including the brightness, color, temperature, effects, anything like that. You can then apply the scene, which then reapplies all of these saved settings to all of those devices. My presence detection automations are triggered when one of the sensors in each of the rooms detects motion. The automation then checks the light levels in that room and a few other things to determine if it should turn the lights on at all. And if these conditions are all met, it will activate one of three lighting scenes depending on the time of day. 
If everyone leaves that room, for more than 10 minutes, another automation is triggered to turn off all the lights again. I have similar automations that trigger some light strips under my bed when one of us gets out of the bed at night to go to the bathroom, and in many other places around my house. I'm able to control my lights with Home Assistant through a variety of different ways. My GU10 ceiling lights are controlled by a combination of Acara H1 Zigbee switches and Candeo dimmer switches. My accent lighting is a mixture of Hue Zigbee light bulbs and strips, as well as some WLED controlled individually addressable LEDs to make funky patterns. Once again, the description below includes links to the videos I've made about these in the past, explaining how I've set everything up, including motion activated lights, in more detail. My third favourite automation also controls some lights, but instead of using presence and motion detection, it controls the lights based on whether or not I'm watching TV in the living room. I have my Google TV Chromecast thing connected into Home Assistant, which lets it know if the TV is switched on and whether or not I'm playing media. When Home Assistant detects that a film or video starts playing on the TV, it'll automatically activate a scene that dims all of the lights. If I've got music playing on my overhead speakers, it will slowly fade that music out so that it doesn't interfere with the TV sound. When I pause the TV because I want to go and get a snack or go to the bathroom, the lights brighten up again automatically to the normal level for that time of day. It's a simple automation, but it feels really premium and makes us feel like we're in a fancy cinema when we're sitting down to watch TV at night. Guests love it as well, as it just happens without them having to think about anything or know how to use my smart home. The fourth set of automations that we have come to rely on as well are our power saving automations. As you can probably tell, I love my technology and smart gadgets, but they are known to use quite a bit of electricity. My office desk uses about 130 watts of power when I'm using my computer, and it drops down to about 25 watts when I leave my desk and my monitors go into standby mode. 25 watts may not seem like a lot, but when it's sitting there using all that power at night and over the weekend when I'm not working, then it all starts to add up. I've now connected all of my desk peripherals to a smart switch, and I've got an automation that toggles it off when the office stops detecting presence for about an hour. That means it won't turn off when I just pop out of my office for a couple of minutes to make a cup of tea, but it will when I leave my office at the end of the day. The same kind of automation turns off the power to my partner's desk and the TV unit in the living room when those rooms are vacant as well. I also use smart plugs to power off the Sonoff smart speakers when they're not needed, as they too use between 10 and 25 watts each, even when they're not playing any music. I especially don't need them at night when we're asleep. When this bed sensor underneath our mattress detects that my partner and I have been in bed for over 15 minutes, it puts the house to sleep. If the air conditioners are on, it sets them to a quiet setting and the temperature to a reasonable level. It turns off all the lights and sets the house alarm to night mode. It then powers everything off that we don't need, the Sonos, all the desks, the electric towel rails, and the smart blind chargers. This all helps us save energy, and money, by making sure we're only powering things on that we actually need. I've made a whole video about my energy monitoring sensors and the automations, and you guessed it, it's linked in the description below. My final set of favourite automations are those that are triggered by the house knowing if we're home or not, and if we are at home, what room it's detected us in. My smart home has Bluetooth detectors in every room that can tell what room our mobile phones are in. Given that we are those kinds of people that always have our phones with us, that gives our house a pretty good idea of what room we are in. The house then uses this location information to automatically show the correct smart home dashboard for the room that I'm in on my smartphone app. One of my future projects is to have our music follow us around the house, playing in whatever room we happen to walk into, but I've not gotten around to doing that yet. So if that's something you want to see a video about, then make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you know when it comes out. This phone presence detection also knows when we've all left the house, and it triggers an automation to turn off all the lights and smart switches, activates the house alarm, and sends the robot vacuum cleaner out to clean. And those are my favourite home assistant automations that run every single day in my smart home to improve our quality of life. There's a separate video on my channel for almost every single automation, sensor, and smart gadget I've shown you right here in this playlist. If you want more information, go check them out. What are some of your favourite automations in your smart home? Let me know in the comments below. I love learning from my viewers about what they're doing, and you always inspire me to improve. Whilst you're down there, 
please subscribe to the channel so you know when I release a new video, and then together we can make your home smarter.